Hey guys, I'm Norm from Tested, and I'm really excited to be here with Phil Tippett at Tippett Studio, your studio right here. This is kind of where you make movie magic. Um, and of course, you uh, pioneered go motion, stop motion animation uh, for movies like Robocop and the character design for Starship Troopers. But we're here not to talk about any of that. We're here to talk about your project, Mad God. Mm -hmm. And it's a movie you've been working on for 20 years or so. Close to 20 years, yeah. Oh my God. How did that come about? Uh, well, it's kind of the antipode to my day job, you know, working in, you know, for studios and theatrical cinema with you know narrative films they're all kind of sort of follow the same pattern you know uh and so you know my my background is not i was educated not i never took any film classes because i couldn't afford it you know so i i went through the uc system and went to art school so my mind was more art bent and i kind of you know grew up in the early 70s in the in the age of like conceptual art you know, so there's a lot of things that you can do if you jump outside a, you know, the conventional narrative norm. Uh, Mad God's a lot of things that I'm not allowed to do you know, normally. Right, it's not something you're gonna see in a Spielberg film. Yeah, and there's a lot, there's a lot of other narrative possibilities out there. You know, there's not just the Hollywood way, which yeah. is, you know, on page 15 this has to happen, and page 25 this has to happen, and blah, 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 and character arcs, and you know, all of that stuff. You know that you read in the book is like you can do that if you want to, but you don't have to. So how would, how would you explain Mad God? You know, it's, it's a short film, and stop motion. But what is the story? Is there a story? Uh, there's a narrative. Okay. And but the plot is structured in such a way that will allow me. It's kind of like this idea of um, multi universes or, or like wormholes. Okay. So that you know, within the narrative, what I, I've structured it so that I can go to different places if different ideas open up. So I might shoot something, uh, and then like two years later, get an idea that could be an offshoot of that, like another avenue. And it, it sounds a little bit like a game world kind of thing, but it's not my intention. It's, it's just to figure out a way of. You're creating this space that's, you know, it's a dystopic kind of, um, uh, more of like a collage kind of mentality in terms of putting images together. Whatever interests you at the time, you know, you've seen an interesting model, you want to put it in the movie. Well, they're, they're usually, you know, sometimes, I mean, I keep a lot of junk around because I think that's really important mm -hmm. um, to, to have, you know, art and objects around because they, they talk to you. So a great deal of, of Mad God works within a very limited structure, but a lot of it's not ruled by intention. It's like I, I just, I'm, I'm letting the work tell me what it wants to be, and then I'm, I'm more like a facilitator, you know, for that. I'm like an abbot in the Church of Mad God, doing what the deity tells me. All right, so you are not the Mad God. <laughs> Hell no. You're, you're the prophet. <laughs> and you've been listening to this, the Word of the Mad God, for 20 years, and you had to actually shelve the project for a long time, put it in boxes, literally, and pack it away. Well, yeah, I, I shelved it because yeah, I started shooting Mad God on 35 millimeter film mm -hmm. uh, before there was digital. And uh, then digital kind of came in. And the scope of Mad God was r bigger than I had imagined getting into it. And so I kind of got depressed and, and thought, you know, this is gonna take forever, it's too hard, blah, blah, blah. And, Working in film was was problematic. Yeah. You know, it was just it was very expensive and and much more laborious. You know, running to the labs and lighting and all of that stuff. Uh, and then the digital age hit, and I was archiving some of my stuff and some of the guys at the studio here that missed the day when you could actually you know make things with your hands were were watching me, and they went, "What's that?" And they thought it was some you know long lost Starovich film or something like that. Oh, it's this Mad God project. And they thought it was cool, you know, and so they, you know, kind of got me reinterested in thinking about it again and, and volunteered their time, you know, to, to come in and, you know, work with me. And like the set that we're on right now uh, is a live action component to Mad God, but uh, we shot a big chunk of the scene about a year ago. Wow. And I just like hung it up and went on and shot some other scenes, went out and, you know, made some money and came back and then tomorrow we're gonna you know plant down here and shoot a bunch of inserts you know a year a year later and it's given me 
you know, time too, since I'm not on a, on a conventional production schedule mm -hmm. where generally you don't have that much time. Yeah. So you have to work exclusively from intention and go in and bang, 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 knock the stuff down. But, you know, if I've got, you know, years to think about things, you know. <laughs> Which for oh, this kind of project, you would. Well, but. you could. I mean, you look at some things, I mean, not, not to, you know, be like too grandiose, but, you know, I think, you know, it took Beethoven like 20 years to <laughs> write his Ninth Symphony. I mean, and you get a different kind of a thing, you know, when you are allowed to, you know, ponder the work itself and, and, and let your unconscious have the time mm -hmm. to, to kind of tell you, let it, let it all bubble up, rather than just saying, okay, well, this is what we have to do, and we're doing this storyboard, and here's a shot, and da, 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 da. it's one thing. So it really is nights and weekends, and you would want it that way. You yeah. want it to be something you do for fun. And you, you started a Kickstarter project to get funding for it, and it looks like, I mean, that's ending middle of this month, but you've already reached your goal. Yeah. I and mean, the project is bigger than you originally anticipated. I was shocked. You know, yeah, was, congratulations for that. So, yeah, hopefully I can, you know, do more Mad Gods. You know, my current thinking is to do a series of, of chapters, mm, you know, okay. of, of short films that are like 10 to 12 minutes long that will build into this thing. And you talked about you going to, from film to digital. So you are shooting just with the same techniques that you did way back with Go Motion, but with a little bit of more modern technology. So you're using a digital camera, DSLR, but your rigs are basically the same. Yeah, pretty much. You know, uh, I mean, uh, up until this point, all of the camera moves that we've done you know, are all stop motion, just like hand, you know, on, on lathe beds and, and uh, we might get into like a little bit of motion control, you know, type stuff, you know, but, you know, it's, it's pretty much, uh, you know, we've got some equipment here that's like, you know, 40 or 50 years old, wow. the you know, ancient pieces of equipment, and, you know, that will plop like a little, you know, digital camera on top of. And you're keeping that footage you shot 20 years ago, 10 years ago, it's all, you're not reshooting any of that. No, no. So when all. you watch that finished product, you're going to see 20 years in the making of, of a Yeah, there, there will be, you know, some, you know, picture inconsistencies, you know, that I think a lot of it will be able to, you know, kind of pull together once we get in the final mm -hmm. DI. And so let's talk about where we are right now, because you kind of converted your studio into a set for Mad Guy. You said you shot this last year, and there's a live action component. So let's talk about some of these things. Like, what, what is this right here? Uh, well, this is, you know, one of the key characters is, um, is an assassin that through various misadventures gets turned into a victim. And uh, so he, he gets eviscerated in this, this scene that we're working on. The, the concept for the whole thing is kind of like Samuel Beckett meets Tex Avery, you know, <laughs> meets, you know, Ray Harryhausen, you know, meets, you know, Hieronymus Bosch. All mad know. gods combined in one. Yeah, and behind here you have props from other projects you've worked on that you just kind of incorporated. I mean, anything in the warehouse, anything you find. So, for example, right here, this is a, this is from Robocop 2, right? Yeah, that's a, a brain prop from Robocop 2 that oh I'm going to repurpose. So that, let's actually go take a look at some of the props and models you've built um, sure. and collected for Mad God. Okay. All right, Phil, so we're here in your office upstairs, and there are tables here with a lot of models. Nothing seems really connected. Are these models that you collect? Everything here is going to make in the Mad God? Or? You know, probably not. This is more like something that, you know, an, an art director, you know, might do when they're dressing a set. You know, just get a lot of stuff and lay it down, and then just get the lay of the land and start, you know, cherry picking what, what it is that you want. I mean, roughly, the way that these tables are, are laid out, approximates the the narrative you know forward momentum of mad god dimensions so you have yeah various modern zones buildings where different things and happen rocket and, ships and planes yeah, where, where do you a, find these models uh you know i just get them from ace hardware up on you know university avenue oh. usually or occasionally uh, you know i don't do that much shopping online but you know i'll find something and you know i've been collecting these things for many 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 years and uh you know, getting various, you know, hired my daughter to put a bunch of these things together, you know, over the years. So, uh, you know, they'll try and just get things in shape. And I've purposely le left a lot of this stuff, you know, in its model kit form mm -hmm. uh, without paint or with a generic, you know, base color 
because I'm not exactly sure of the, the color key for the scene until I, I actually get to it. And then you know, I'll, I'll place it within the context of the, of the whole thing and just you know, give myself the you know, option of, of determining what the look is going to be at that point. Is that what you find not... yourself doing very often, walking through model shops and hardware stores? Oh, I'm and... always up at the, the Ace Hardware you know, on, on University. has got this great model shop. So I'm, I'm, something I'm, cool? I'm always in there. Oh, yeah. Pick, pick know, it up? Once a week. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I mean, for someone who's making their own short film or stop motion film, it's a very cool thing to do. I mean, you don't have to build everything from scratch, buy models. Like you said, you don't even have to paint it see where it is fits in your film. Yeah, exactly. There's so much in. stuff that you can do for nothing, you know, yeah. basically. And then there's a lot of, you can buy used models, in fact, you know, and, uh, you know, paint them up. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you can make your own movie. You have a studio, even with like iMovie. You can do exactly. everything that you want. Use you a know? camera phone, smartphone. You know, it's, uh, you, you know, iMovie, I've done some, some stuff with my kids where I've, you know, I've, you know, they wanted to know some production stuff. So we've made like little movies and, you know, able to put like 25 tracks on it, you know. So it's like, you, you can get really close. I mean, it's a really good thing for uh, you know, young filmmakers. It's like a, like a sketching pad. It's, it's not so precious where you just have to make everything perfect and dot all the I's and cross the T's. You can just do a whole bunch of stuff, you know, and, and you know, just learn by experience. Absolutely. So behind here, you have some other models. You want to talk about what these characters are? Is this an assassin from, uh, from the short No, film? these are, these are uh, some zombies okay. that, that are going to end up in, in one of the scenes that I'm going to open up a little bit later. You know, true to Mad God, the, some scenes have stop motion, some scenes have live action. Um, but I think these guys might actually be like little uh, puppets, little rod puppets that, that I'm, I'm going to use. So, so for stop motion, you can just buy a G.I. Joe and, you know, build the armature, replace an arm, so you have a, a stiffer arm in there for the stop motion, right? Is that, yeah, you could. Works? I mean, there's actually a lot of uh, component parts that you can buy off the shelf these days, you know, to have an articulated uh, character. And depending upon where you are in your price range, there's all kinds of guys out there that are making stop motion armatures. There's books on like how to put together stop motion puppets now, which was not the way it was. Phil, that looks like a arm armor you could buy in Radio Shack. Yeah, it was. This is you know a very old you know Radio Shack arm that you know I picked up in some garage sale. And it, <laughs> it still works. It still even like barely works. Uh, there are, are a collection of inhabitants of a certain zone in Mad God that I call the shit men. And they're, they're little people that are just made out of crap about, and they're kind of like mindless zombies that okay. wandered around doing useless tasks. And there was gonna be a, a scene where this thing, you know, something like it lifts up, you know, 50 of these guys and drops them into the maw of some Splatter. other horrible denizen, yeah. Oh, it's terrific. Uh, this is all, all material that's being collected for uh, a, a scene that'll pro be in one of the later chapters with an, with an alchemist. So this is all part of the alchemist's lab. Oh my goodness, this is kind of creepy. It's, is, that a, is that a real frog? It's or? a real frog. Yeah, I just picked that up in LA when I was down for my day job. Put, put it in a jar. No, it looked great. You know, and there's like a little homunculus here. It's just, I, don't know, I just found it in you know, some swap meat. <laughs> you know, so. yeah, I just keep my eyes peeled, you know, for, for all this stuff, you know, and, and something will present itself and it goes in the Mad God, you know, repository. When you're done with the film, where does all this stuff go? When, when you, uh, I, I hadn't even thought that through. Does it go back no, in the boxes no or stays well, on the shelf as decoration? You know what, or? Uh, the way I'm looking at it, Mad God will never be done. You know, there, there will be stations that will be complete and it will be built. Uh, but, you know, I'm leaving myself the option to, to go back into something that I've, I've shot years ago and open it up. Yeah, speaking know. of stuff you shot years ago, let's go take a look at some of the actual the sure. 20 years ago models. All right, Phil, so we are in your office space, and earlier I asked you about what you do with the models after you've shot them for Mad God, and it turns out they're just hanging around here. I mean, like this guy, the assassin. Yeah, he had to be, you know, a lot of these things were built with, uh, you know, foam latex, which has a very, very short shelf life and, mm -hmm. and starts to rot and crumble. So I had to rebuild the assassin. Ah. But there's a scene where this salamander and this ape are being vi vivisected. And the assassin is on his way to his mission and can't waste his time, you know, uh, with creatures that are suffering, <laughs> which ends up kind of being part of his curse. But you can see, you know, that this this poor guy is, uh, you know, 
really seen its best days. So luckily I shot everything I need to shoot with this, this thing. Oh my God. Are, are there any specific characters here that are, you hold a certain importance in, in the film or that you like a lot? Well, they're just, yeah, there are various, various characters that, that work at various stages. Like uh, this is a sentry. You know, there's a couple of sentries that guard this mad keep and the shipmen are these, oh, you know, are you these go. useless, you know, droid zombies. Uh, and somehow it's all going to piece together for a narrative. Perhaps. Perhaps. In different dimensions. <laughs> no, it will. It, it'll, <laughs> it'll all make sense in a strange, twisted way. Awesome. But it's just, yes, part of the idea that I've got for this thing is, you know, a, a short film or a short-ish film, the way I analogize it is, is like if I'm making a vessel or a pot or something like that, that it needs to be the right shape to hold the amount that it needs to hold. So the, the narrative will tell me, you know, what that needs to be and it'll, it'll just be something that's felt, you know, not Very determined. Cool. By the end of you know, next year, I want to have the first chapter in intact. But I want to, I want to attempt to uh, accelerate that, you know, mm. and try and get something out a little bit better and get get going on the second chapter. You're doing the animation yourself. Uh... I do some of it. You know, I'm, uh, part of this thing is to encourage you know other people that you know I, I've got you know a, a kid from CCA over here that some of my guys teach and have found some you know really good stop motion animators that are. Yeah, young and you know want to just try things out and then there's like old timers like myself you know or uh, Tom Gibbons who works for me is a really terrific stop motion animator and Chuck Duke just joined us he's done you know just tons of stuff so you know I'll try and pull these people in mm -hmm. to shoot I don't have to shoot everything it's not that important to me and then hopefully at the end though what is important is getting people interested in stop motion as, as yeah a, uh, I, you know a, Mad God isn't isn't as I said ju just a stop motion picture I, I you know, was inspired more by the you know, work of Carl Zeman and the way that, that Zeman approached filmmaking with this kind of collage approach where things didn't have to look realistic but they, you know, had to be, you know, fun and artistic mm -hmm. and if there are some huge disjunctures or continuity issues that you can never get away with, you know, in a theatrical film, then you can do that in Mad Godland. Oh, that's so cool. I can't wait to see the first chapter at least. Me too. Yeah, when you're finished. And I'm sure a lot of people out there. Uh, the Kickstarter is still going on right now until June 16th, I believe. I believe, yeah. And uh, you can contribute to get a copy of Mad God when it comes out. And for anyone who wants to follow along the progress, however long it may take, they can go to Mad God's Facebook page. Uh, you guys are posting photos and developer entries and stuff like that. Uh, Got Can't wait for the movie to come out. And uh, thanks so much, Phil, again. Um, we'll have more about Mad God and more about Tip Studio uh, on Tested.com. I'm Norm and... I'm Phil. Bye. Cut.